Hello, my name is Daniel Mesco, and this is my uh, tax calculator Java app that I did in BlueJay. Um, so the objective of the app was actually given to me by the uh, our, our textbook, uh, Blue Pelican Java, Unit 5. One of the questions was create an app using uh, different conditionals and methods, which is what we were learning at the time, to um, basically calculate, given how many hours someone worked and the, their uh, rate of pay, what the, the tax they would pay on that is. Um, so and, and you're taking into consideration also not just gross pay, but you're taking into consideration uh, federal income tax. Oh yeah, tax. a number of taxes. Social Security tax, all sorts of payroll taxes. Yeah, so. Right. Um, Which is income based. So. Income based, yeah. Right. So they give you um, only a little bit of information to work, but they give you that these are the two things you ask. So here's my code. I just started from scratch. I only import a java.x, a javax.swing. What is the purpose of importing that um, into your program? Well, javax.swing allows me to uh, request input from the user in a more, in a, in a way I like to do more than uh, just asking the console. It's a little neater. It comes up in a dialog box. It's called uh, J Option Pane, which you can see right here. Uh, and you can do input. You can uh, print out like uh, results of something. Uh, just have a yes or no button. I used a yes or no button in one of the other Unit 5 uh, apps. Uh, but that does not come in Java uh, in the basic compiler. So you have to import the uh, swing. Uh, file to, to get it all. Yeah, the swing class to get it all in. So basically, they tell you when when you're building the code that the two things you can ask for are the number of hours worked and the hourly rate that they uh, the person was paid. So they don't tell you. I drew, I drew right through it. It's not really calibrated. But uh, the problem is they don't tell you exactly how to use these at number of hours. Like they they don't tell you is it in one week or is it just you know I worked seven hours in some period of time. How much do they make just those seven hours? So you kind of have to make a couple assumptions on your own, uh, which uh, don't really hurt. They just they make it a little more of an approximation than an exact amount. So what I did first is like, and I kind of did some comments here. The first thing I did was request the input from the user, uh, their hourly rate, and the number of hours worked. Then I created all the variables I, I thought I would need, and as I found as I needed more, I would go up and I would initialize some more that I would need. Um, so first I parsed the two doubles that I just got as strings, I made them values, so the hours they worked and the wage. And why do you have to parse information from the keyboard? Well the problem with J option pane, or not the problem, but one of the drawbacks I should say, is that any value it takes, it, it doesn't know whether you're typing in a number, a phrase, uh, anything, a, du a double value, so what it does is it makes it all a string. Uh, now if you know, like in this case, I know for example that they are going to be giving me some integer right. or some double. I, I gave it a double because it could be three point five dollars an hour, something like that. Um, I know that it's going to be a, a value that's a double. What I can do is I can convert it from a string into a double, knowing that there's not going to be any characters like f or z in there that that would complicate it. So parsing it basically converts it into a double, so that I can do math with it, so that I can compare it to other values. If it's a string, it doesn't know how to compare it. Okay. Um, so basically, then I then I use something called semi month, which was kind of confusing. Uh, the resources that the unit gave us was the um, government website, the, the tax return website, where you can calculate your tax bracket, basically. Uh, the way it does, it works is it uses uh, a pay you get semi-monthly. So half a month, how much you made, and then multiplied into a grand scheme, you can calculate how much you make in the year. So basically what I was doing is um, taking the weight or the uh, hourly, the number of hours they gave me and assumed that, let's say, they were working over a... Uh, 40 hour work week. Mm -hmm. So then twice 40 hours is why I added 80 here, so times 80 to find out how much they'd be making uh, each hour, for all the hours in half a month. Right. And then from that I can figure out how to categorize their taxes. Mm -hmm. Because I couldn't make a tax rate for them without knowing how much, what bracket they fit into. Right. So um, semi-month was the hardest concept to really figure out. I had to create that on my own because they only gave me these two pieces of information when I, uh, the unit um, instructions basically. Right. So semi-month was just taking the wage, multiplying it by 80, assuming that there's 80 hours that they're working um, in, tw in, two in two weeks, which is half a month. So then I did gross pay, which is simple enough, wage my, uh, times the hours, and then I established but did not define a couple variables for the rate at which they pay, uh, their net pay at the end, and the federal tax rate. Uh, now these are all constants, and they, they told us to use final doubles for these. Right. These would re remain the same throughout. So the FICA tax rate is the same for everybody here, and the state tax, I'm assuming, is Florida. Uh, is 7%. Right. Uh, now these other rates are the different types of rates you can have depending on your tax break. 10%, 15, 25, uh, 28, 33, 35, and 39.6. So that's the highest uh, people in, 
like the top 1%, the people that live in Florida, for example, the most that they would pay would be 39.6 percent. Yeah, okay. just for the just for the federal tax. Oh, for the federal tax. But then, tax, yeah, right. that, that's what I was um, joking about with I don't know someone I was talking about. The, each of the tax rates or each of the deductions for tax is taken from your gross pay, right. but not from the pay after the previous tax has been deducted. Right. So, this doesn't go entirely, you know, too high that that would happen. But right. theoretically, you could lose all of your money. <laughs> because they're not deducting it from the previous amount, they're deducting it from your gross. So eventually you could be, you could owe the, uh, the government money that you don't have. But... It's kind of like going to Vegas, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you walk out of there the and all of a sudden you owe wins. everybody. Yeah. The government yeah. always wins. Okay. So you never know. Uh, so I created all those doubles initially, and these are just data that I got from the, um, the federal website on, on the tax returns. And remember the idea, folks, why uh, Daniel went ahead and made those quantities final? because you don't want to run the risk of those values changing while the program is running. You know, what's another example of a final that you would want to include in your program? Well, let's say that one made a mistake and made the Social Security number an integer. You can safeguard against anybody changing your Social Security number if you make it a final. Although for something like Social Security number, you may want to make it a string because um, you're not going to do any math with, a, with Social yeah. Security number. You're not going to add my number to come with us and get some Superman Social Security number or whatever. Okay? Yeah, the, the most notable uh, example... Hold on, one minute. Hold on. Yeah, I was just remembering. The, the most notable example I thought of for, for a final double val value that's static and just declared uh, never changing is in the math class, like pi and oh, the natural or number. E. Or yeah, E, the natural number. Right. It's the same everywhere. Right, good point. Um, okay, so... All the variables and constants are declared, and the last two are just creating your individual tax um, number would be taking the gross pay and obviously multiplying it by the tax rate. So that's how I figured it out. Um, okay, so these are where the conditionals come into play, which was just the uh, focus of the unit, is to, is to determine which tax rate you actually fit in. Right. So the, the semi-month variable I created up here established a number semi-month that doesn't really mean anything to us, um, but it's just the way your wage is calculated, or the way your tax bracket is calculated, uh, based on the wage they put in. So what I did is I went down, and I created a series of nested, or not a, a nested, but just recurring if statements to determine where you fit in. So the first one is if, if your semi-month is less than $94 and a half a month, um, your tax rate is nothing. You don't pay anything You don't pay anything in tax, as far as federal tax is concerned, yeah. So federal tax is zero. Now rate, rate is not a constant. Rate 15, rate 13, whatever it was, those are constants because that's um, everybody else's rate. But or those are the constant rates. But your rate is just rate itself is the name of the uh, variable because it changes. Right. So federal tax is zero and rate is zero. Now, if it's between 94 and 472 dollars in the semi-month period, you pay 10 percent tax rate as far as federal tax is concerned. So then I actually start doing calculations. Your federal tax is the gross pay times rate 10, and your rate is rate 10. And the reason I, I established your rate as rate 10, I made the two variables equal to each other, is because in the bottom, when I print out the final results for the user, uh, I want them to know where they fit in, what their rate was, not just the calculation. Right. So I need to create that specific to them, because otherwise I would just have to print out all the rates. Right. Um, and that's the same for all of them. So 472, 631, all the way down until here, the last else statement is if you're above uh, $17,000 in half, in half a month, then your rate is the highest and it calculates. But all the calculations are the same just changing the rate each time to the new value. Okay. Um, and these numbers, 472, 1631, those are set on the, um, the government website the same way, on the, on, the, on the tax, the IRS website. So. Okay, tell us about this line right here because yep. it looks like this line here is the output of your program, yeah. right? That's where everything comes Everything, together. you kind of put everything together with that, right? Yeah, it's kind of confusing because I, I just did it in a, in a stream of consciousness, basically, and debug it like that. Right. I'll explain it. Okay. Um, yeah, tell us about that right there. So, the well, there's one little line before that. It's to calculate your net pay. So once all the tax rates have, or all the taxes have been determined, um, Social Securities and state were already at the top, mm -hmm. and then now that we've got which what your actual tax for uh, federal tax is, it's just gross pay minus federal tax minus Social Security minus state tax. Right. And, and by the way, if uh, if you're a student in college, for example, and um, let's say that. Um, your your parents are paying for your health insurance, and you're you're not really 
you're not really interested at that point, even though you should be, but you're not interested at that point um, opening up like a, a, a retirement account, okay? Uh, who thinks about that when there's 18 or 19, right? But <coughs> what the program so far that Daniel has done would give you a, a, a really accurate uh, number uh, for your net pay. So let's say that you go to Duke University and you start working in the library and uh, they tell you, okay, we're going to pay you $10 an hour. Um, you can actually, so far from what I'm seeing, Daniel, you can actually, once, once you know what the state tax is for North Carolina, you can go ahead and enter that value in this program and you can get a much closer value of your net pay than if you just tried out, you know, well, I, I make this amount of money and minus roughly 18% or whatever. So it's so far, it's looking, looking very accurate, Daniel. So the, the, there was one other stipulation I didn't mention that the um, instructions in the book asked us for, right. and that was to round to two decimal places. Ah, okay. uh, because since these are decimal multiplications and the, and the values are very uh, small, you're going to get decimals far out beyond the decimal point. So I, yeah, how I, do you go from, let's say, six significant figures to, to two places after the decimal point? How do you do that? Uh, well, I researched a um, string method that does that in your, in, in your printout, and I, and I made it in a comment here so that I could keep track of it later when I needed it. You, it's basically like the same system.out print file you would do, but inside of what you're printing out, you do string.format, uh -huh. and then uh, it's kind of hard to see because of the gray color, but this is, um, print, uh, what is the sign for, do, mod. degree sign, what do you call that? Or the mod. percentage mod. sign, mod, yeah. Mod.2f, mod. 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 which means to two places, right. and then comma, wage is just the variable. The, the name of the variable. The name right. of the variable, yeah. Okay. Sort of like you have math dot um, absolute Pow. value or math dot pow, yeah, math dot pow, where it's two conditions, one of them is the variable. I, I want you to take a look at something, guys. It's interesting the way Daniel did the research and actually implemented code that he found based on his research. But he actually put down code that he was going to use subsequently in his program as comments in his code. So something to think about, okay? You know how sometimes uh, whenever you guys had a problem debugging your code, I told you, okay, comment out some parts of your code and then see what the part that's not commented out, how, how, uh, what, what happens when you run it. Well, this is an, uh, another way of enhancing your programming by adding code that you may use in the future as comments in your code. Okay, something to think about. Okay. okay and so the last thing remaining is to print it all out in a... Uh, window for the you know, user to see. Right. And I wanted to make it neat. They, they, they showed us a sample printout and they wanted us to copy that kind of format. Right. Um, and everything was indented and it was in a line sort of and there were spaces between different categories. So I used the J option pane message dialog and not the input one because I don't need to uh, have any input from the user. I just need to print something out. So once the code does all this and does all the calculations, which is instantaneous from the minute you type it in, it comes right down to here and starts printing out. And then, uh, so basically, Null is the first, it just is the title of the, of the window, which I didn't need to add one. And then what you have um, as the body. So, hours worked, I just made a little kind of uh, area and a space at the end so I could leave room for the, uh, the actual value. Then plus the variable hours, and then I use this a lot, uh, backslash n means to indent, or not indent, excuse me, to skip to the next line. So, I did hourly wage plus the wage, skip to the next line, the gross pay. Now this is where the numbers start to become calculated. So what I did is I did, I didn't need the system.outprint that I had up there since I'm using a J option pane. I just needed the string.format part. So this stayed the same, string.format, and then each of the variables changed. And you can't see it because it gets cut off there, but basically I do that for every single variable I, I have. That you want to output. That I want to output down to two decimal places. Okay, and let's, let's run run out this program, let's run it, and then let's put some real world information in it, okay? So I just got a job at this place, a very, very dear, place for me. It's called uh, Ale de las Fritas. Okay? It's on Bird Road. It's a wonderful place for hamburgers. Okay, I just got hired as a cook and I'm going to be making $15 an hour. Okay, So I want you to tell me um, if I work, um, Daniel, if I work say, um, uh, I don't know, 50 hours a week, I want you to tell me at $15 an hour after federal withholding, after Social Security and so forth, and after the state tax for Florida, I want you to tell me uh, what I'm going to be making. Okay? All right, so this is specifically for the 50 hours you worked, how much? Well, you this, well this, are you doing this semi-monthly? 
Well, the calculation for your tax bracket is semi-monthly, but this what, what it's going to give you is just how much you get to keep as profit for those 50 hours. So the fruit of oh, your okay. 50 hours. Okay, yeah. so 50 hours. So 50 hours, your rate is what, 15? 15. Okay, there you go. So your gross pay, $750, that's easy enough, 50 times 15. And then it determined that you're in the 15% tax bracket. Oh, I'm at the 15% tax 50%, bracket. 15%, yeah. So then it shows you how much, based if it's 15%, how much the... Um, how much is going to be taken off of the 750, which is 112, right. and then Social Security and state tax, which are constant, and then right. all of those deducted from your gross pay gets your net pay. So look at that, guys. $750, <laughs> 57 of it goes towards your retirement, goes towards Social Security. That's a lot, right, Camille? Um, and 113 goes back to Uncle Sam, <laughs> right? We're actually lucky, guys. In places like Sweden, you have taxes that are up like 70 percent. Okay, 70 percent taxes. So you make $500 and you you get less than 150 back mm. because the government pay gets that much more. And this is just only including those three types of taxes, which are just um, right determined in your payroll, right. but as an individual you probably have a lot of other taxes you have to pay if you own property. We're lucky in Florida not to have a, a state income tax and a, a local municipality income tax, but right. some places that have that factored in so they wouldn't even be making the 527. Exactly, exactly. Okay, this is an outstanding program. Uh, very good, Daniel. Does anyone have any questions for Daniel? Questions at all? Uh, Daniel, in re uh, put up your code. In, sure. in retrospect now, what do you think might be uh, a good thing to add if you were to uh, be given extra time in the future to work on this? What, what do you think might be helpful? I, I could see something right away that might be helpful, like a little splash screen that explains what it is. You know, like when I open up, um, what's that program for doing taxes? Um, TurboTax. You open up TurboTax and the first thing you see is a little splash screen and it says, welcome to TurboTax. Uh, this is a program that will do this, 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 you know. So like a little splash, splash screen that explains what this thing is and instead of, okay, how many hours did you work? Yeah. Well, I'm, in what context? Okay, did I work on my lawn or did I, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. How many hours did I watch Twilight? I mean, what, what are you talking about when it says hours? Okay. <laughs> That's, that that was one of the things I was thinking about doing um, beyond just what the, the, the lab, lab asked for, the unit asked for, right. uh, adding some kind of condition that I could determine uh, you know, how long, over what period of time did you work these hours? Right, you know? right. That way I'm not just assuming that it's, you know, 40 hour work week and then it's 80 in two weeks and then that's your tax bracket because it might be different. Right. Uh, you know, if you worked those 50 hours in one week versus working uh, those 50 hours over the whole month, it's obviously right. a different rate. Questions or comments? Anybody? No? Yes, Camila. Um, Hold on, give her, give her the okay. mic. <laughs> Remember, when you guys create an application, especially in the private sector, okay, Gustavo, I could, I really could picture you in a few years programming for, you know, uh, Verizon or for Terramark, okay? <laughs> Big money there, right? Um, if, so. if you do program for it in the private industry, they're going to want a, a lot of comments because you're not the only one programming this pro, uh, application. There's a team of 25 people that are programming at the same time. And they're going to want to know why did you change this variable? Why did you name it that? Et cetera, et cetera. There's always um, comments that you have to to add. Okay. All right. Um, Daniel, any final thoughts? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> okay. what, Thanksgiving. Turkey, right? Yeah. Turkey. Here, they'll just got turkey at the, in the head. See, I can't really do the hand turkey because I was not even. <laughs> I realize why that doesn't work now, because it's not a piece of paper, it's well, a smart you, you're, you're using black ink, that's why. Right. <laughs> I'm going to see if I try this, throw myself into red ink. There you go. You please wish the audience a happy Thanksgiving. It's beautiful. Happy Thanksgiving. Yay. Okay, very good presentation. <laughs> very good. Yeah. Outstanding. Thank Daniel, you. it's amazing. I, I don't know anything about programming, so you just did that?
Like, you just did that yeah. a lot of people. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's I pause just, that video. I don't know anything about programming, but you put that, like, this is what this class is. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Never mind screencasting, that's another. <laughs> but this is what this class is. You right. program. We program. So Daniel just came up with this and did all that you, to you're, program it. You're, you're given certain it's suggestions. It's very abstract. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't know anything about programming. So it's, I took a class in high school, actually. Oh, did you? That long ago, but obviously I don't know anything. But I think that's so cool. Well, that you, it, the entire class is doing a fantastic job. And one of the nice things about screencasting is that now for future classes, James is going to be taking my AP class next year. Now he has this video as a resource. Right. So that he can build on his skills. And look and see what you did. Exactly. And what is that, an app? What are you, what are you in right now? Right now we're using Screencast-O-Matic, which is just... Oh, you mean the window? That's what you said. But not even oh, on the screen. It's, it's called, it's, well, it's called BlueJ. It's sort of like, it's like a Microsoft Word for programming. But it, it knows the syntax, and it knows when you've messed up, and it and knows when you've done it right. So, so it's <laughs> color code. So you can tell right yeah, now. The, 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 co the color is my favorite color. What else? I mean, so now about programming. Program. What else? You, I literally, I'm like, okay. yes. what else can you program? I'll, I'll show you some examples. I'll show you some examples. Like, yeah, they, okay. they were gonna.